Hey friends, welcome back to another video. My name is Emma LaFave, and today I'm gonna to be doing a comparison between these Caran d'Ache water soluble wax pastels, which you guys know I love, but they are very pricey. I'm comparing them against these Sergeant Art watercolor crayons. I found these on Amazon. They are significantly cheaper than the Caran d'Ache ones, but I wanna know, do they even compare? Is it worth it to get these and save your money? Let's test them and find out. Okay, so today we are doing a comparison video. And if you've watched my channel in the past couple weeks, you know I am obsessed with these Caran d'Ache water soluble wax pastels. And I wanted to test them up against a less expensive brand, um, these Sergeant Art watercolor crayons. So I will say I went on to Amazon to try and find some. Uh, watercolor crayons. These were the ones I could find. I also found, silly me, um, another set that was by Muno, this gallery set, and I just looked at the names. I didn't even look at the packaging thinking that they were two different brands. They are exactly the same crayons. You'd think that the cover would have given it away, but I didn't even take a look at that. They are exactly the same, so I'm probably going to be giving these away to a friend. Um, but they are the exact same crayons. I felt so silly once I opened them. I was like, did I really just buy the same thing in two different packs? I did. I just have a bigger pack and then a smaller pack, but identical. So even though I'm not sure why they go by different names, but they are the exact same product. So I'm just going to be using the bigger pack for now, but I wanted to test them up against these Caran d'Ache ones because there is a pretty significant price difference. These are pretty pricey compared to these and I've been using these a lot but if there's another option that is more affordable I want to make sure that you guys know about it because if I'm going to be doing tutorials on this I want to make sure that there is an affordable option for others. But the whole thing about this is I don't know how good they are. I don't know if they even compare. So today we're going to be testing them out. I'm going to be swatching some similar colors and then we'll do like a quick comparison painting. So let's jump in and get started. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is swatch them. So I picked out all the same-ish colors at least. The one thing that I notice about these crayons, see that kind of like white outer part? They just don't look as nice and waxy as these do. So just looking at it, it looks like I have a feeling these are going to be a little bit more dry while these are a little bit more creamy, but let's just test it out. So I'm going to lay it down. We're just going to see what it looks like as a crayon. So the shade is slightly different. This is a little bit warmer. Um, and the way it applies down, I mean, does it look too different? It looks this, you know, when you have a crayon and it's just a little bit harder, that's what this feels like. This just feels more pastel-y. It's a little bit softer. So there's that. Um, I don't know how that's going to make a difference. This, the reason why, one of the reasons why I'm in love with these crayons is just, they are so creamy. You know what I mean? I wonder if over time, if I just keep using these, if they'll do the same thing, but they feel like a little bit, like you have to press harder to get that pigment down. So we'll see how it translates when we render it out with the water. There's our light blue. Yeah, it feels like a unsatisfying kind of crayon that, I don't know. It's just you have to press really hard to get this pigment down. Do, do, do. The scarlet is pretty orangey. So I don't know if you can tell the difference already just looking at them, but this is kind of, these just feel nicer, which obviously you're going to get with higher quality materials. So that's expected. Yeah, these are nicer to draw with. Um, do the light green and then the dark green. But the colors are pretty similar. This is a little bit lighter. Oops, dark green. Okay, so just drawing with them, 
These definitely feel a lot nicer, smoother, creamier. These are a little bit harder to draw with, but now let's really put it to the test and see what it's like when we render it out with water. So I'm just gonna take one of my etcher brushes and I'm just gonna swipe it across. Oh, it's pigmented. Add more water. And I'm using Canson paper right now, which is not the best paper. Um, it's fine for this, but I mean, it's not one of my favorite watercolor papers. I'm just gonna try and render it out. I wanna see if I can lift that texture underneath. Yeah, I wanna see if I can lift up that crayon underneath that texture, which it looks like it's kind of just sitting there. It's gonna drop little bits of water in there just to see if I can get some cool effects. And then let's try this one. See, I don't even really have to scrub very much and it just like disappears. Oh. I was hoping, I had high hopes for these crayons. I don't know why I would have high hopes for these crayons. Um, because price does matter when you want something that has quality, but I don't know. I mean, they're pigmented so far. I'm sure they could do similar things. I feel like once we do like a bit of a painting, it will put it to the test. Maybe a bit. Oh, you can kind of see the crayon underneath this one too. So it's not too far off. These are really pigmented, that's cool. They're rendering up nicer than I thought they would. <clears throat> I thought they would be, you know, just like really tough to kind of get that color up, I don't know. It's not too bad. I'm also gonna try them on that palette that I have to see if picking up the color that way will make a difference. Okay, I'm gonna just speed through this part a little bit. Actually, I'm gonna drop some color in that one just to get the same kind of effect here. Okay, so there are my swatches and not too bad, honestly. They're they're pretty comparable just by looking at them. Um I'm I'm kind of impressed. With the way they look so chalky, just like the actual crayon, I was a little bit worried about that, but it's not it's not bad at all. So one other thing I do want to test, uh what I do with these crayons is a lot um what I do with these crayons a lot is I'll take the color like right from the crayon, which I feel like it's not as easy with these. There's that like white kind of coating on it. What if we put it on this palette? Let's see. Okay, it lifts nicely. There we go. Okay, so that's good news. You can just use it on one of those palettes. So it doesn't do the same thing like these do. Like you can lift it right up from the crayon, which is a little tip that I use. But yeah, it's the same. As long as you can put it on the palette, I think it doesn't really matter too much. So that's good to know that you can just scribble it here. And then this way you can also mix colors because that's one of the things that I love about these and this palette is that you can mix the colors by scribbling them here, right? And then create new colors. So look at that. Okay, so there is, that's a positive side. So you can do that kind of stuff with it. The other thing I wanna test is how do they look when you draw over top of some of the watercolor for the texture. Um, but I think I'm gonna save that for the painting because this is still wet. I think we should just jump into a comparative painting um, with the two of them and we'll really test the difference between the two. Okay, so on top here, I'm going to do Caran d'Ache, and then on the bottom, I'm going to use those. I was thinking of just doing like a simple kind of landscape. Um, maybe, actually, you know what? Yeah, like a sunset. Let's see how well they blend together. So I'm going to do kind of like a sunset. I'm going to have yellow in the middle, moving into pink, and then moving into blue, which will kind of be like purpley. Let's do this darker blue. OK, 
Okay, and then I'm going to have some green. I'm going to get some darker green. Oh, green's over here. I know, it looks so weird at first, right? And then maybe we can add trees and details with the um, palette after. So let's do the same kind of thing here. Yellow in the middle. Then goes into pink. Now I'm assuming there's going to be quite a lot of texture under this. Um, so we'll see how it actually looks, if it looks any good or not. Like that. But mostly I just want to see how these blend together. These just feel so scratchy to color with. That's like my only complaint about using them so far. Everything else seems pretty good. They just seem so scratchy. Okay, now let's hope this works. So I always start with the lightest part, which is the yellow. Okay. Go back and forth, and then I'm going to slowly just add a bit more water to my brush. Move into the pink. Bring some of the pink down. Get some of that pink in there in the yellow so we can get some orange. I'm going to try and get some little orange clouds in the sunset like that bring some up then I'm gonna move up to the top where my blue is then I'm gonna bring it down to the pink I'm gonna wash off my brush go from the pink bring it up into the blue because I don't want that yellow and the blue to mix I don't want green now, this is where this comes in handy. Oops. I want a little bit more pink in there. So I'm just going to grab my pink. Just add some. More pink in there. You can even add a little bit of purple. Why not? Like so. Okay, and then we're gonna do our grass back and forth. I'm gonna try and leave a little bit of space in between the sky. So I find these blend really nicely together, the Karen Dosh ones. So I'm curious to see how the other ones are gonna blend in. Bring some of that darker green over. And then we can always add in more once it dries. Okay, so that's the first one. Let's see how this goes. Starting again at the lightest part. It's very bright. And then moving into our pink, add more water because it's drying out. I'm trying to get up some of that texture. Bring some of that pink down. And again, I'm going to have to add more pink from the palette, I think. So far, it's blending out really nicely. You guys, I think this brand might not be too bad. Like, you don't have to go out and buy the really expensive pack of these Karen Dosh crayons. Do I regret it? No, I love them. But for an affordable um, just uh, option, these are pretty decent so far. Let's grab a bit more pink, make sure it's the right pink from the other palette. Like it's pretty good. And you don't see a lot of that texture underneath too, which is nice. Because I was worried you'd see that crayon texture. But you don't. Huh. Like, they blend together pretty well. Like, would you even be able to tell which is which? I don't know. I don't know. Let's try the grass. 
And if there's a little bit of texture left behind in the grass, I wouldn't mind that just because grass is textured. But it doesn't, it lifts up really nicely. Try to blend it. Like, you guys, it's very similar. The greens are a little bit different. I feel like this one's a little bit more vibrant. But you can always go back over that and just do more, right? <laughs> okay, so these are comparable. Like, this one even looks a bit more vibrant, does it not? Or maybe it's still wet. I don't know. Maybe that's just because it's drying. Okay, so let's wait for both of these to dry. And then we can just add a little bit more detail of maybe a bit more clouds or trees or something. Okay, so now that they're dry, <laughs> I mean, they're not that different. I feel like this is just a little bit smoother, but not, not a huge difference. Like, I'm actually kind of shocked. I thought for sure, hands down, these would be like 100 times better. But they're actually pretty comparable okay hmm. all right so let's just do like a couple of maybe trees i'm just going to do some darker trees i'm gonna mix in some blue with it so let's do a dark blue the dark green so i'm officially shocked <laughs> i don't know why i, I, I don't know I thought for some reason that these would just not be as good. And I'm, I, the initial feel of the actual crayon just was not promising, but it's, it's not bad at all. Just a couple little trees. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just going to blend it out. Ooh. Ooh. Like that. We could do maybe some flowers see how they draw on top because it, it layers pretty nicely and you can use water if you want like look how bright that is usually with watercolor it's very hard to layer a red or a vibrant red on top of a green just because they're contrasting colors they will um, it, with the transparency of watercolor, it just, it looks really, really dull. But these crayons, if you add enough pigment, they actually work pretty decently. And then we just add like a little bit of stems. And I'm kind of curious, like if we added some grass... Like, how does the texture, the texture look with this? Maybe not that one. Because one thing I love about these as well is the texture of these crayons just looks so nice. You know, you can add that extra bit without rendering it out and it still looks beautiful. Maybe just blend it at the bottom or something. I don't know. I like it. But let's see what it looks like with the other ones. So it seems to pick up the pigment just fine. The same. So you can use these as like traditional watercolors, which is awesome. Wash it off, blend it out. Oops, I dropped some water there. Okay, and then the red crayon, let's see how it layers over top. Not bad. It's actually still pretty vibrant. Hmm. Still a little harder 
kind of get onto the paper. Just you have to press pretty hard, but it's oops, it's not too too bad. Just render it out just a little bit. Not bad at all. And then for fun, let's just grab some of that crayon just for a little bit of texture. Guys, I think <laughs> I think we have a winner here. Like these are pretty good. They're very similar. I don't know. So this is good news for anyone who's been wanting to try these. I am going to have the Amazon links in the description below. Um, this one does not, oh no, it does come with a white. I'm actually curious about the white. See if it's, it can overlap at all. I don't know what I'm going to be doing that's white. Let's just do a cloud for fun. Just see how opaque it is. Oops, I am shaking everything. Okay. So this is the Karen Dosh one. Let's just see. And then. I mean, it lightens it up. There wouldn't be a white cloud with a sunset like this. I am aware. <laughs> so, you know, I just wanted to test out the difference. Okay, this isn't releasing as much white pigment. Let's see. And then the other thing I want to check is just how does it lift compared to the Karen Dosh ones because these I think they tend to lift pretty decently like if you want to lift some color so let's just I have a wet brush and I'm just scrub 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 like you can fix mistakes pretty easily let's see how well this lifts okay not as well but I mean, it's still fine and lifting is not essential, but yeah. So there's my comparison with these. And honestly, I am very impressed. I am, I will have to say that. So I'm so glad to say that these are definitely a good option if you are more on a budget and because they are the same as these, you can get away with this 12 pack of them. The colors are uh, pretty similar to the smaller one. I mean, especially if you have a palette like this, someone said they got like a, a cutting board from the dollar store that they use to use as a palette so if that works by all means do that and then you can mix like a ton of colors just with this palette so definitely look into that um, I'm glad I did this and I hope it was informative to you if you guys have any questions please let me know in the comments below thank you guys so much for watching I really hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something don't forget to subscribe to my channel and follow me on Instagram and all my other platforms for tons more content I'll see you guys again soon Bye.